Coach, you were 5-79 and 79 last year. Why the playoff talk? Well, we made a couple of key trades, and we got the funk. Oh, well, uh, glory be, the funk's on me, Bob. Keep that funk alive. Keep that funk alive. Well, it's 1975, and I'm like, we'll just be keeping the funk alive. Yeah. And hello out there, everybody. What's going on? This is Miho from the Too Close to Call podcast, and we are going zero to 100 this morning. Zero to 100. It's Pags. I'm here, people. Pags, we are all the way up to number 37. We are coming in hot. Yeah, so the 30s gave us a lot of great conversations, and 37's coming in with a little bit of a... Yeah, early 30s, quite a few numbers, even into the mid 30s. But I got to be honest with you, man. Last night when I was kind of laying there going through our outline and what we had to record, I was like, okay, zero to 100, we're on 37, 37, 37. Who the fuck was 37? (laughs) Dude, I couldn't even think of it. I had to really stretch on mine. Yeah, I had to ask Google and even Google's answers. I was like, Nope, not good enough. We'll mention them, but not my guys. So after doing a little bit of digging, trying to keep the Philly flavor to the podcast, there's one gentleman deserving within all four major sports organizations. Did you see who it was while you were researching? Yes, I saw it, but I'm going to let you do it because that's your realm right there yeah that's my guy and he's coming from the ice and it is eric desjardin one of the big desjardin fans yeah man well key defenseman for the flyers for 11 years from 94 all the way to 2005 he was uh named an all-star a couple of times finished twice in the top five for the norris trophy which is given to the top defenseman in all of hockey so the guy was a stud and one of my Early sports memories was I was at a Flyers game with my dad and it was Flyers versus the Hurricanes. And I don't remember how they got there, but I remember Desjardins, we were sitting lower level behind the one goal and he scored on that goal with like 57 seconds left to give him the three to two victory. And I was like, oh, that was awesome. People were going bonkers to win in the last minute. And me as a, you know, probably seven, eight year old at the time was like, that was friggin' sweet. Hockey players, they, they, they last forever. They are on the same team for however long. And it's amazing because in all the other sports, you see just constant turnover every year. And you can get get somebody's jersey because they're going to be there long enough. Yeah, honestly, I think that partially when you're saying that, I'm like, damn, he's right. And I'm thinking it has to do with the salary cap and contracts because – when you get into these other sports, you make you know a buttload of money as to where NHL guys packs. We just talked about Carson Wentz making $32 million a year. Well, the big offseason, last offseason in Philly was JVR, and I think he's getting seven a year for five right. years. And everybody's like, holy moly. So these guys know, and the league knows, like they make four to five million over the course of seven or eight years. Hell yeah, I'm signing that. I'll take my $35 million and get the hell out of here. No problem. No doubt, man. It's all guaranteed. Like, give me my money. That's it. So 18 years total or 17 years total from Eric Desjardins between Montreal and Philadelphia. So like you said, two teams in 18 years for a heck of a career. I'm going to I'm gonna take it another route. Like I said, I was really reaching. When I typed in 37s, it came up tires. It was like, here's some tires, 37s. You want to put on your truck? I was like... No, I'm looking 37 for 37 inch tires <laughs> coming in hot. I was like, well, I can't go tire. Let me guess, Pags. If you bought three of them, you got the fourth one free. Correct. No, Correct. man. I know the tire market like the back of my three hand. Four. Three. You get four one. All right. All right. But, you need uh, four. Here we go. I went on a stretch here. He wore 15, but for a little glimmer, and it was his. NBA championship season, he wore the number 37. I love watching the guy play. He was hilarious on the field. He was about 
the closest thing to Marshawn Lynch you had in the NBA. I'm going with Meta World Peace, also known as Ron Artest. <laughs> oh, my God. Meta World Peace wore 37. He did. And I know that somebody fact checked that. I don't know about that one. He did. I, I'm looking at a picture of him right now. Oh, this guy over here. That's a reach if I've ever heard one. Oh, dude, no doubt. I mean, well, I, let's hear his stats since he was one of the best 37s ever. Why don't you go ahead and read his PPGs for that? I guess what? 10 games he apparently wore the jersey. All right. I'm going to find him. Hang on. So here you go. And I got exactly why he wore 37. He wore 37 his last year in the NBA, and it was because his age was 37. Oh, that's so, so stupid, that is- and that's what I thought the answer was going to be. I hate this even more <laughs> now that you're doing this, by the way. I hate you're doing this. And it was a poopy year for yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> 2.3 <laughs> points per, per game. Oh, my God. He was horrible. Oh. He barely even played. He had 25 games. Shot 39% from the field, averaged 1.9 field goals made per game, killing it in the number 37. If I'm going to go on this, and I've already gone on this tangent, so hey, we're going to roll with it. Ron Artest was just one of those polarizing figures in the NBA where you did not want to mess with him. He went from the malice at the palace. He was freaking fighting fans, jumping in there, got a beer dumped on him when he was laying on the scores table. Someone throws a beer on him. He runs into the stands. It doesn't get much better than that. I was going to say, how could you go from that guy to literally having world peace in your name? Like, It's, oh pretty, my. it's pretty amazing. And from what I've heard from like Kobe and all those guys, is he was a great teammate and really somebody you liked on your team. So... I think the media kind of skewed him one way, but sure. uh, when you found him in the locker room, he was kind of a different person all around. So, hey, I got mad props for him. Number 37. Did not play well. 37 was a better 15. Better world peace. You got my vote. There it is. And that'll be the one and only vote he'll get for the best 37 of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for writing in Harambe to the presidential election bags. Well there done. You go. <laughs> I mean, the only other one I could think of was Sean Alexander, and I wasn't the biggest fan of him. Yes, he was a very good player. Yeah, he was good, for man, for a handful of years there. Out of Alabama. Um, he had over 1,800 yards the one year. Wasn't he like MVP or something like that? Yeah. And then he like, and then I drafted him. And I think this is why I don't like him. Drafted him first in my fantasy league next year. And I think he put up 700 yards. And I'm like, what in the hell is going on here? Oh, man. Let's look at I that here. And 2005, 1,880 yards with 27 touchdowns Jeez. rushing. The next year after Pags drafts him. 896 yards with seven touchdowns. I was pretty close there. That was, that was off the cuff. Yeah, there, so only 20 touchdowns, which, doing my math, is what? Only 120 points less scored for you after you took Something them first like overall? <laughs> <laughs> I can understand I mean, that. I didn't realize there was a personal vendetta there against Sean well, Alexander, yeah. but now I'm uh, I'm getting the meta world peace. You're trying to move on and find <laughs> calm and peace from your Sean Alexander hatred. That was the crazy time in the NFL where it felt like the touchdown record was getting broken every 27 year. touchdowns. That's unheard of. You know, I don't even think running backs get 27 carries in a game now. That's over one and a half rushing a game. Crazy. I mean, that was when Terrell Davis broke it, and then uh, Larry Johnson broke it for the Chiefs, and then Sean Alexander did it, and then a couple years later, Ladanian Tomlinson did it. So it was just like a crazy time. The so there you go, Pags, combining podcasts together. I think your new answer for maybe when we have a new era of football, maybe 15 years, because that was 15 years ago. We had dudes getting 27 rushing touchdowns 
That was yeah, what was the high last year? 10, 11, 9? You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Like, apparently, we have a different NFL today than in 2005. Well, dude, it was the workhorse back era. And now we're kind of in the era of you need to have two, maybe three running backs that can do it out there. And they need to be able to pass, or uh, they need to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield. So it's just completely different. And from their 36s last year, it's like Brian Westbrook might have been in the wrong era because that was his game. I mean, he probably would have flourished even more if he was in the NFL this day and age. Football is now space and speed. Those are the two key components to everybody's offense, not weight and power. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yes. crazy, man. But yeah, man. One last gentleman to mention before we wrap this up, or I guess two gentlemen briefly, is Doak Walker. The gentleman who had the award named after him that's given to the best running back in college football every year because he starred at SMU as, get this, a running back, a defensive back, and a kicker. So doing it all in the late 40s as he took home the 1948 Heisman Trophy and now has the award named after him. So clearly he was pretty good back in the day. The only reason I know that name is playing NCAA football, and it's like, your running back won the Doug Walker Award. I'm like, oh, sweet. I got another trophy in my trophy case. Yeah, that's my guy. Oh, man. <laughs> and the last dude from the MLB, Dave Steeb, or Stibe. All you listeners over the age of 40 out there, let us know how the hell you pronounce that. But apparently David was the second winningest pitcher in the 1980s, only behind oh. Jack Morris a seven-time All-Star, and he threw a no-hitter as well. So Dave has a solid MLB resume for somebody that 99% of people have never heard of. Did he play for the Blue Jays? Is that correct? Yeah, that's what it says here, north of the border for the majority of his career. So that's probably why nobody knows. Exactly. <laughs> well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the 37. We were reaching all around in that one. Uh, hopefully 38 brings us some quality conversation but if you guys have any other 37s we're, we're not thinking of if you played with any other 97s you want to shout out we will gladly shout you out on all of our social media platforms continue to uh, spread the love and thanks for uh, listening we will talk to you next week with our favorite number 38 later peace coach we were five and 79 last year why the playoff talk well, we made a couple of key trades, and we got the funk. Oh, well, uh, glory be, the funk's on me, Bob. Keep that funk alive. Keep that funk alive. Well, it's 1975, and I'm like, we'll just be keeping the funk alive. Man.